Game of Life is a famous cellular automaton developed by John Conway. It is a zero-player game occurring on a two-dimensional grid, and the game progresses in a series of iterations as the cells or tiles evolve based on the number of neighbors they are surrounded by. The reason why Game of Life is so famous is because of its interesting and surprising ways the cells can evolve, and sometimes they form patterns. It's almost like watching a petri dish under a microscope and watching the microorganisms thrive and die. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to build Conway's Game of Life on scratch. So we're obviously going to start off first by making a new Scratch project. I've called it Game of Life, and I'm going to delete uh, Scratch Cat here. Sorry about that. Um, and we're going to make a new costume, and let's just call that uh, Dot. I will convert to Bitmap because that makes it easier to uh, draw something more precise. So I'm going to zoom in, and we're going to draw a 16 by 16 square. So if you look on the screen, it's about 4x4 four four of these big tiles in the Scratch Editor. I'm going to make it black, and we're going to move this to the edge of the center aligning point. So we're going to align it like that, and that's going to allow us to kind of tile our cells later on in the video. Let's head back to our code, and I'm going to start off by dragging in a when green flag clicked and broadcast flag. This is just to ensure that all our scripts run at the same time, not in any particular order with the green flag. Now, we are going to make two new lists called cell X and cell Y. Both of these can be for all sprites. Finally, make another list called cell value. Now, we'll be using these lists to store data about each cell, and we'll need that when we start, you know, implementing the rules of the game. Now, we're just going to delete everything in cell X, cell Y, and cell value when the flag is clicked. So every time we will actually have a different initial starting pattern, which will later influence what our game of life will look like. Now, go ahead and make a new block called setup. Make sure that it's running without screen refresh, because we want it to run in an instant, as it will be setting up the grid for our game of life. Now, make two new variables called x and y. These should be for this sprite only. We will be changing these values as we're adding them into our cell x and cell y lists so that, you know, we can tile in, in order. So let's start coding our setup block. Add in a set y to negative 180 because that is about the edge of our screen. Now, drag in a repeat block from our control section, and we're going to change that number to 30. Now, this is because our cell size is 16 pixels, so in total, it would be 480 um, as the width for our game of life. Now, we're just going to add in a add x to cell x and add y to cell y. Inside this uh, kind of loop, we're also going to add 0 to cell value. Um, zero will represent a dead cell, but we'll change that later. And finally, add in a change x by 16. So, you know, each cell is lining up with each other perfectly. Now I'm just going to drag in a set x to negative 240 before this loop, because that will be kind of the edge of our screen. So if you click on this chunk of code now and show our cell x list, it should come up with values ranging from negative 240 to 240 and if we have a look yes indeed that is happening so now we're going to stick another repeat loop over all of this because we also want to change our y value as we go down row by row right so i'm going to drag in a repeat block and we're going to change this value to 23. again this is because the height of our screen in Scratch is about 360 pixels, and 16 times 23 is a little over that. Now I'm just going to add in a change y by 16. So, you know, our cells, again, they would line up as we're kind of iterating this row by row. So let's drag our setup block underneath our when I receive flag, 
And if you click on the green flag now, um, our cell X and cell Y list should be generating. So you can see that they are working perfectly fine. And with that, we can now actually start drawing our cells onto the screen. Go ahead and make a new block called draw cells. Make sure to click on run without screen refresh because obviously we wanted to draw as fast as possible. And we're going to have to make a new variable. I'm just going to call it IDX. This stands for index as we will be kind of increasing the index by one. And then we're going to draw a cell in the next position inside our cell list. Yeah, it's a, a mouthful to say. So we're just going to set IDX to zero and then we'll actually have to import the uh, pen extension because we will be using stamping functions to actually draw the cells. So first we're going to erase everything and we're going to drag in a repeat block. Let's repeat the length of uh, cell X or cell value this time because we want to go through every single position in our list, right? Now inside the loop, we're going to change our index by one. So we're going through each item and then we're going to simply go to whatever position is in the cell X and cell Y list. And then we're going to stamp based on whether our cell value is, let's say, equal to one, which means that it's alive. So I'm just using the item IDX of cell X and item IDX of cell Y blocks, which will give us the respective values inside our list. Then I'm going to add in a if condition, and this is going to check if the index of cell value is greater than zero or not, right? So if it's greater, then we want a cell to appear. If it's zero, then it's dead, right? So we're not going to stamp. So if you click on the green flag right now, nothing actually happens because everything in our cell values is zero, which, you know, we actually said inside our setup. So in here, if we change it to one and we click on the green flag, you can see everything's black. So, that, so that's a good sign of our code actually working. And in order to kind of randomize this, we can add in a pick random from zero to one. So now you can see it kind of gives us a random initial state every time we click on the green flag. <laughs> it reminds me of a QR code, but uh, that's irrelevant. And we can actually adjust the density of the cells by adding more pick random from zero to one blocks and stack them together. So this will actually give a lesser probability that a cell will be alive. So if you click right now, you can see the cells that are alive are much more sparse and uh, scattered. So our project is now able to draw the cells in our game of life. And now we arrive to the hardest, but also funnest moment is where we actually implement the rules of the game. So we're first going to drag in a forever loop around our draw cells. And we're going to have to make a new block called update cells. Inside this script, we will be telling each cell to be alive or dead based on the amount of neighbors it has. That means if, you know, it has, let's say, for example, three neighbors around it, it might, it might stay alive or die, which I actually had to review later. So we're going to reference Wikipedia right now. Number one, any live cell with two or three live neighbors survives. Number two, any dead cell with three live neighbors exactly becomes a live cell. Number three, all other live cells die and dead cells stay dead. So let's actually start coding. We'll set our IDX variable to zero again, and we're going to use a similar technique by running through all the cells in our list. So we're gonna repeat the length of uh, cell X, and we're actually going to just change our IDX by one inside this loop. So pretty similar to our previous draw cell block. Now we're actually going to make a new variable to keep track of the neighbors a cell has, right? So we're just going to make a new variable called neighbors. Um, it can be for all sprites or for this sprite only, doesn't really matter. And it looks like Scratch is British, so unfortunately we'll have to add the U there. So we're just going to set our neighbors to zero at the beginning of the loop, but we're going to change it by one if it has a cell beside it, above it, or uh, diagonally near it. Yeah, it's uh, quite complicated, but we'll figure it out. So first, I'm just gonna drag in a change neighbors by block, and inside here, we're actually going to say change it by the item IDX plus one of cell type. Now what this does is that it finds the value of the cell 
to the right of our cell right now. So if you visualize it, imagine like the cells being numbered from 1 to let's say 30, right? So the next cell, the next adjacent cell would be our current number of our cell plus 1, right? So that's going to find the value of the cell to the right. Similarly, I can find the value of the cell to our left by subtracting 1 from IDX, right? So if our cell right now is cell number 10, then the one to the left would be cell number 9. So I'm just going to do that right now. And that will give us the kind of horizontal values of our neighbors. Now we're going to do a similar technique for the cells above and below us. So remember that the width or like the amount of cells for each row is 30. So if you look at our setup block, you, you can see that the width is 30, which means that if I want to find the cell below me, I have to change our row by one. And our row has 30 cells, right? So if I just say item IDX plus 30 of cell value, then we can actually find the cell below us. And we can also find the cell above us by subtracting 30. So this is already like a huge breakthrough. But finally, we actually have to find the kind of cells diagonally adjacent to us. And again, we can use a similar approach to this. If I find the cell below us and change it by one, then it will give us like the bottom right cell, right? So we're going to do change our neighbors by item IDX plus 31. And then we're going to do a change our neighbors by IDX minus 31. So then, you know, it would kind of give us uh, the bottom right and uh, top left uh, adjacent diagonal cells. <laughs> it sounds really confusing, but we also have to find the kind of cells that are in the bottom left and top right, I believe. So we're going to change those by IDX plus 29 and minus 29. So that's one block apart. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. But now we actually have to store this information in another list because we can't work with our current cell value list, right? Otherwise, the next cells, they would have like messed up data. So we have to make a new list called updated cell value. Click on OK. And we're just going to delete everything in our updated cell value. Uh, remember not to put it into our loop, but above everything else. So it only deletes once. And now inside our repeat loop, let's actually add in our conditionals to whether a cell should be alive or dead. Where are we going to add the information to? Well, in our updated cell value list. So now I'm just going to add in our conditional. The first one being if the IDX of our cell value is greater than zero, so we're checking if the cell right now is alive or dead, then we're going to say if this cell has two or three neighbors, then we want to continue keeping it alive, right? So we're just going to do if neighbors equals the two or neighbors equals the three, then we're going to add one to our updated cell value. If not, then we're just going to, well, kill the cell. So we're going to add zero to our updated cell value so that it's dead. So those are kind of the rules for any cells that are alive. So for the cells that aren't alive, remember that if a dead cell has like three neighbors, then it'll become alive. So we're just going to add that right now. If our neighbors equals the three, then we're going to add one to our updated cell value. And if not, the cell stays dead. So we're going to add zero to our updated cell value. Now, believe it or not, we are actually almost done with our game of life simulation. Now all we need to do is to add our new data from our updated cell value and kind of paste that into our current cell value. And to do that, we'll use our IDX variable again, we'll, we'll set it to zero, use our technique of uh, kind of repeating the length of our cell value. And in here, we're just going to change our IDX by one and then replace the index of our cell value with item index from our updated cell value. So it's kind of going through the list saying, okay, number one from updated cell value, plug that into number one of cell value. So with that process, we'll be able to kind of plug that into cell value manually. 
And with that, it is time for the moment of truth. Will our hard work pay off? Click on the green flag to test. Yes, look at that. The beauty of controlled chaos. You can see that the simulation starts off chaotic, but then slowly it arrives in a stable pattern over time. You can see that certain patterns are almost always stable, and you can actually learn more from Wikipedia. <laughs> I'll post the link into the description. But right now you can just have some fun clicking the green flag and just watching your game of life grow. As it really is so satisfying to watch that screen and look at your hard work pay off. Look at the cells kind of morphing as time goes on. Oh, that's a beautiful pattern over there. That looks really cool actually. Ooh, delightful. One more tip before I end this tutorial. You can control the speed of the simulation by adding in a wait 0.1 seconds inside the forever loop. If the wait is longer, then obviously it'll take longer for the simulation uh, to run. But you can see it right now. I'm just playing around with some of the initial uh, patterns. And yeah, it's just amazing to watch. But again, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. It was really fun making it and also kind of exploring the game of life on my own because I kind of just looked at the Wikipedia article and just improvised some code based on the rules. And uh, yeah, there's actually a bunch of interesting challenges that you can try with the simulation. Um, for example, you can try to make our screen bigger by making it scroll, which is what I ended up doing in my example because it just wasn't enough. I wanted to see more and more cells. So I'm just gonna time lapse that. You can just watch me kind of speed run uh, making a scrolling game of life. And there's another interesting thing you can try is what if you could add cells with your mouse, right? So then you could constantly keep the simulation alive by, you know, adding cells with your mouse. For example, if you click, then let's say you create like an extra cell or some sort of pattern that might, you know, move around or implode, explode, I don't know. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's late in Hong Kong right now, about 10.45 p.m. in the evening. Um, I will head off for some sleep. But in the meantime, enjoy watching the game of life on your screen or, you know, some extra footage at the end of this video just showing some intricate patterns that I managed to find uh, as I ran the game of life on my uh, computer. Make sure to like and subscribe to give you more support and stay tuned for more Scratch tutorials. Peace.